Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on fronosphoto.com, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I'm gonna send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and this is a review of the Canon RF 10 to 20 millimeter F4 IS. This is an ultra wide angle lens and I've been waiting for this since the RF mount was announced. Why? Because this is the behemoth that I've been carrying around ever since with an adapter on it. And this is an absolute monster, the 11 to 24 F4. And this is finally replacing this in my bag. So what did I photograph? Well, as soon as this lens got in my hands, I took it out to the Philadelphia Phillies game, who at the time of recording this were in the playoffs. I wanted to get an ultra wide angle shot during the national anthem to match what I've done in the past last year and a few games before this game with the 11 to 24, because that is the best way to show you the difference in the real world, to show you what 10 is and to show you what 11 is. And I also got to run around on the field after the Phillies won their series so you get to see me out on the field using the brand new 10 to 20 and putting it right into the mix in the real world. So how does it feel in the hands? It's I mean, it's great when you compare it to this big boy right here. This 10 to 20 weighs in at 1.25 pounds or 570 grams with the chunker of a lens, the 11 to 24, coming in at 2.6 pounds or 1180 grams. It is a heavy lens and this is much more of a joy to fit in your bag and hold in your hands because it, it's light, all right? This is your lens cap. It's different than your regular lens cap because it doesn't just clip onto the front, it has to clip on to the lens hood that is already built in. Now, as you can see, it has a very Boeing front element, but this is not even close to the size of the Boeing that you get with the 11 to 24. Now, some people may say, is that a fisheye lens? And no, this is a rectilinear lens, which is designed for the lines to be straighter versus bowed that you get in a fisheye. For those of you out there who have have a 14 to 35 f4 from Canon just basically look at it put it in your hands and you basically have what a 10 to 20 looks and feels like in your hands now in terms of the the zoom throw this is 10 this is 20 it's not a long throw at all. And honestly, when you get a lens like this, you're not really gonna shoot it at 20. So there were a lot of comments when this was announced, why isn't it a 10 to 24? Why did they shave off four millimeters? One, probably size and weight. And two, when you're shooting a 10 millimeter lens or an ultra wide angle lens, you're not trying to shoot at 20 or 24. You have lenses to do that. You have the 14 to 35, the 15 to 35. That's where you're gonna do that. When you wanna shoot wide, you shoot at 10 millimeters. That's what you have the ability to do with this, and that's why you don't need the extra millimeters on the long end. Now, there are a couple of switches on this lens. You've got your autofocus to manual, as well as your IS switch. You can turn stabilization on and off, and you also have one custom function uh, recall button right here. When you do it, it's like two weeks. Excuse me? Two weeks, total re welcome to total recall. Two weeks. You have your custom control ring out here, which I, I still personally don't use and I know some people do use it so what do you use a control ring for let me know how you use it in the comments maybe I didn't think of something and that might work for me so let me know what works for you that's the outside of the lens guys not a lot to it it is a beautiful feeling lens in the hands now let's talk briefly about the IS I don't know if IS is really needed in something this wide when it comes to stills but when it comes to video, it definitely comes in handy. We did a quick walking test just to see what it looked like, but I primarily am reviewing this from a photo standpoint, but for those who are looking to get ultra wide video, to have IS built in, in something light like this, that's gonna be pretty amazing when you're walking around. Now, before I jump into the computer, I want to explain what you're going to see when you attach the 10 to 20 millimeter to any of your RF bodies. There is lens correction data and information built into the lenses. So the preview that you're getting inside of the camera is the 10 millimeter preview. But 
in Lightroom at the time of recording this, you do not have the lens correction data already built in the Lightroom. It will be out as soon as this lens is officially launched into the world. So what we've gone ahead and done is we matched it to a JPEG straight out of the camera, which shows you what 10 millimeters looks like. So let me show you an example right here at 10 millimeters. This is a JPEG just outside, just to show you what you can get at 10. Now, when I show you the raw file without lens correction, you can see you're gaining a little more on the edges. It is a 10 millimeter lens with correction. Without correction, I don't know what the exact millimeters are, but it's not as rectilinear as you would get when you shoot 10. This isn't an issue with the lens. Canon's not trying to pull one over on anybody. Canon, Nikon, Sony, Tamron, Sigma, they all have lens profiles that they're building for these lenses that are designed specifically for digital cameras. So whereas if you have lens correction off, you're going to see a strong vignette when lens correction is on, you're never going to see that. This is how these companies can make these lenses smaller and lighter and more affordable by being able to do this. And it's not a problem at all. It's We're gonna see more and more of this as we go forward. The fact that they were able to give you a 10 millimeter corrected frame uh, image is, I mean, look at the difference. You could carry this around forever versus this thing. Just look, which would you rather carry around? And you save money, because this, is less expensive than this by 700 bucks. I'm gonna tell you that actually it's probably 800 because you gotta include the adapter in order to get that thing on to your RF mount body. Let me cut in here real quick because I wanna show you this photo taken with the Canon 10 to 20 millimeter and edited with Fropac 4 starting with Blue's Clues, followed by Brooklyn, C41 to give it that filmic look, Copper Tone, DeLorean, High C, Kaleidoscope, Mel Brooks, Saltwater Taffy, Thick with Three C's, Tin Type, and Wet Hot American Summer. But I also wanna show you my all-time favorite preset from Fropac One called Skittles, and boom, look how good that looks. If you wanna speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point or you're just tired of other people's presets not working because ours absolutely work, we created 14 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack4. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you wanna get the Grand Slam bundle that has Fropack one, two, three, and four, and of course Skittles, you can save even more. Now, let's get back to the review. Let's take you out to the Phillies game. This is 10 millimeters. It is wide. The Phillies logo looks great. You can see corrected how across the screen it looks really good. Now, let me show you how we corrected this because lens correction isn't built into Lightroom at the time of recording this. We went ahead and matched it to a JPEG based off of a 14 to 35 F4 correction. So we got it as close as possible. We think it's right there. It's, it, there's nothing wrong with it. So we like how this looks. So I just wanted to show you what it looks like corrected. So after this photo, I took a walk up into the stands just a little bit because I just thought it would be cool to get a wide angle of the entire stadium, basically empty from the first level. Now we've enabled the lens correction here, but watch what happens when we turn it off. I turn it off and you can see, look how strong the vignette is around the outside. But again, Canon designed this for 10 millimeters, corrected. And it's slightly bowing because that's just what you're getting when it's uncorrected. Sometimes you might like that in your frame and other times you might not, but just be aware that when it's uncorrected, there is more vignetting and you're gonna see some much darker spots around the outside. That's when it's uncorrected. For example, when we saw the 20 to 70 millimeter F4 from Sony, when it's uncorrected, it is heavy on the vignette. When you add the correction, it gets rid of it and then, then you lose a part of the frame. But you're not exactly losing a part of the frame because they're giving you 20 millimeters when it's corrected. So moving on, this is the shot that I try to get every time something major is happening at the Phillies game. So we've got uh, the national anthem happening for the first game of a series. They always bring out the big flag. They always line up both teams, the Phillies on the right, the Braves in this case on the left. You can see that there's a strong vignette because I am not correcting this image at all right now. Other than doing the editing, this is what you see with the raw file. Look up here. We've got the light stanchions, both sides. Now, when I go ahead and enable lens correction, 
and put the distortion up to 120, look at what you see. This is the difference. I lost those other light stanchions, but this is the corrected at 10 millimeters. This is what you see when you're shooting the pictures, and that's what I did. I lined it up on the left, and I lined it up on the right, and I did a very good job, Jared. You did, congratulations. You did a good job lining that up, and then was surprised to see when I brought it into the computer, I had all of this extra stuff in the frame, which is good to me. Now, this is where it gets interesting, because I took this photo before I got the 10 to 20 millimeter lens, and I used the 11 to 24 at 11 millimeters, the widest that I have it. Like I said, you have 11, you're going to shoot it at 11. I replicated it the next time they had the national anthem with the 10 to 20 millimeter at 10 millimeters, and you can see the difference of the field of view. With the 11 to 24, you're getting 126 degree field of view. With the 10 millimeter, you are getting 130 degree field of view. You're even, just that four degrees makes all the difference in the world. Just look at how much wider we are with the light stanchions. There's so much more room to breathe on the left and on the right compared to the 11 millimeter. And I should also say, if you only have a 14 millimeter, you're getting something like two times more the field of view at 10 than you are at 14. It makes all the difference in the world. So if your camera manufacturer, Nikon, only has a 14 to 24, are they gonna come out with something wider in the future for you? Because that is something that I think a lot of photographers want. Then I wanted to take it a step further on this same exact image and show you with zero distortion correction. I left vignetting correction on and look how much wider it is. I am getting the light stands fully in on the right and the left. And I noticed at the top of the frame, I actually got part of the steel girders that were above my head. I had no idea that they were even gonna show up in my frame because again, in the preview, you have 10 millimeters, you don't see this. I think this is perfectly fine in a situation like this. So you can choose between, do you like it like this or do you like it like this? That's up to you to decide. Now let's take you down to the field where I use the 10 to 20 and you're seeing footage from my 360 camera from Insta360, the one inch version. And a lot of people asked about STM motors. They're like, why would they use STM versus USM? Now just think about this lens. There's not a lot of room needed to move the focus element. It's not super heavy. Whereas in something like this, you're moving a much heavier element. And Canon also went ahead, let me check my notes. They put in here a position sensor, which shortens the AF times when you go ahead and use it. So it's much quicker. In the real world, wasn't a problem for me. I used it as these, as these guys were celebrating. I didn't miss focus. It's gonna be much harder to miss focus at 10 millimeters because everything's gonna look like it's in focus. And also it's an F4. So the motor's perfectly fine for how I was using it. Now in terms of blades, for aperture blades, you've got nine aperture blades. On the back of the lens, you have a place to put the gels if you need to have gel filters, if you're doing landscapes. But other than that, in the real world, this is what 20 millimeters looks like. So if I don't want 10, I could zoom out to 20 and it looks perfectly fine. The colors, the tones, the clarity, as I always say, it looks fantastic, especially when we knock some of our Fro Pack 4 onto it. It looks much better. Back to 10 millimeters, down low to get Bryce Harper here with the R3. Love the way this looks. You can look up by his hands. Are you getting fringing? Nope, looks very good to me right there. A little bit more celebration. You're not getting this. Oh, I went to 11 millimeters. That's right. I must have accidentally turned it when I was trying to get into position to get this shot. And that's what you got. Now, one of the shots you want to get out on the field is when they are celebrating, uh, but also when they are doing a team picture. In the future, I'm gonna stand up a little higher so that everybody looks like they're not smushed together, but this is what you get at 10 millimeters. You don't need to have a 10 millimeter to do this, but it was funny because they kept backing everybody up because the widest that most people have on the field is a 16 to 35 or a 15 to 35. And the last two images are these people celebrating in the stands after a shore bomb and yeah, doing it back into the lights. You can see how the, how the lens reacted. 
I think it looked fantastic. And then this guy celebrating with his Bud Light in one hand and his broken beer stein. And this just is a little example of close focus. You can get within 9.8 inches of your subject at all focal lengths. And I'm not even sure how close I was to this guy, but this is what that shot looks like. Let me cut in here real quick and let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Are you looking to build your very own online portfolio? Well, use what I use for my personal website and I've been using for more than 10 years at this point because it's simple, easy, affordable, and I don't need to know coding. In fact, it takes me less than five minutes to put up a gallery of my Phillies photos when I've got new photos to post. To get your 14 day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. If you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Now let's talk about price. $22.99 for this lens, whereas this lens brand new was $3,000 and you could probably get it for under $2,000 used today. This is a must buy for the people that know they need this. People go, who's the 10 millimeter for? Who shoots at 10? The people that need this, know who they are because they know what they shoot. I like having it for photojournalism. I like having it for when I wanna show the entire stadium. So maybe in some landscape situations, it's gonna work. Maybe in some real estate situations, it's going to work. But just, you know, some people do those real estate shots that look too wide to be real. So don't be that guy. But this lens absolutely comes in handy for the professional that knows they need it. Let's sniff it. Mmm. Peanuts and Cracker Jacks? Smells like a baseball stadium. Wind tunnel test? Nope. Canceled until I build a new wind tunnel test situation. So after I sign off, we're gonna run a slideshow of my favorite images that I captured with the 10 millimeter. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave some comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and wait for that slideshow. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.